he's kind of been ripped through time and things are not easy for him. And yeah, I just, I think that a darker, more reflective tone was, was something that um, ended up happening in season two with the score. The first thing I wanted to, I had written to ask you was I, I saw that you had started when you were doing season one, you started composing toward the end of the season first, right? Is that kind of how that, mm -hmm. did you take a similar approach with season two? Yeah, I did actually. Um, very much so. Um, I did, I knew what was happening in episode six. And so, um, that's what we're, it's like being teased all the way through, um, and whispered in Loki's ear with, with a choir, um, sort of teasing him with his destiny. Um, so I did a lot of that, the same kind of thing. Like I, I was writing, um, to the script before I'd sort of seen the pictures and the new Obi theme as well. I sort of did early. Um, so I really like working like that. It gives you a bit of a framework for how to, how to map things out. I want to ask you about Obi's theme in a, in a minute, but, but first I so love all the places that you get to go musically this season. You have like the seventies theme, you have like the 1800s music. You also do such a, I love that you are posting about this on Instagram and like letting people focus in on, on music in such a way. But <laughs> was there a, a time period that was the hardest to write for or maybe required the most research or, or listening? No, I guess, I mean, none of it's like massively accurate because it, it's sort of like the 1890s. I'm, you know, um, I sort of did my own version of what I thought it would be which it could be because it might be a different multiverse or something. So um, that, that, that kind of, um, yeah, a lot of it was, was just in my mind as an imagining rather than being like really historically accurate. Um, and I think with the, with the Norwegian folk instruments, I didn't, <laughs> I did, I heard them play Olav and Eric. Um, I heard them playing in a concert. Um, it just they happened to be in a in playing this sort of Nordic traditional music with a friend of mine who's a violinist. And I heard them about a year before. Um, and so it just popped into my mind, like, oh, maybe it'd be really fun to use those instruments that I saw in that concert. Um, because I just remembered how beautiful they were. And so a lot of it was sort of random luck and coincidence as well. Um, and I, I, it seemed to just really work for Loki's calling of Loki's heritage and his past and his sort of mother. Um, and then and then also um, it seemed to work for Sylvie as well, like her sort of having a more traditional Nor Nor Norwegian instrument as the basis of her theme. And then Mobius, I, I just read the script. I hadn't seen Owen Wilson's performance of it yet. Um, but to me, I was like, oh, I just imagine this really lolloping sort of um, agent who loves jet skis. And I imagine that he might listen to Bon Jovi. Um, so then that's why I sort of did that guitar for Mobius. But um, I don't use that Mobius theme that much in, in season two. I love your, I mean, this is a similar thing, but I love your instrument choices. I mean, I'm obsessed with theremins myself. And I know you have like, Nickel Harva and stuff in the season. When you're writing for these things, how much are you researching like correct articulations and stuff? Or or would you rather just work with a player and kind of talk through the capabilities of the instrument and all and, and all that stuff with them? Yeah. So like what I would do with um Eric and Olaf would be just send them sometimes I'll just send them a piano line and then I'll say, can you do something that's like really similar to this and then if you could do something that's got a bit of a sort of um improvisatory feel to it and and then they'll send me that back and then I'll build the piece around this line that they've sent me so sometimes I'm inspired by the what they've done before I start working around it and um Charlie um the theremin player would Again, I'd sent him things on a sort of crappy synth theremin. Um, 
And the theremin is just, it's got such a huge range and the, the low end of it sounds incredible. You can sort of layer it up with low synths and it just kind of sounds like a sub bass texture sometimes. And um, Charlie had brought a couple of new instruments. Um, I need to like double check with them what they were. But so he brought a couple of new instruments since season from season one to season two, and they sounded amazing. So he he'll record the lines on on a few different instruments and then send me options. And he'd got this gong speaker, which he'd play through. So I didn't even know he could do sort of weird effects. Um, but we yeah, he he there's some stuff in the score that is actually theremin effects that you wouldn't even recognize as being a theremin. I really love Ovi's theme. Uh, listening to it, I really especially love the, just all the different layers. Uh, I was curious, like, can you, can you kind of walk through some of the main components of that? Is it all just very interesting, like synth patches and stuff, or, or is there other stuff in there as well? Yeah, there's synth, synth patches, um, as a recorder, um, a sang in it and then I ended up like dum, 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 and it sort of did I did a layer of string pizzicato but then I like ran it through a processor so it sounded a bit gnarly um and then yeah there was like a little kind of 808 beat in there sort of like a bit of a retro um sort of ticking along uh, some clocks it was just like um oh and some kitchen sink percussion as well so yeah lots of just that seemed to fit the character <laughs> and his workshop which was like slightly chaotic because you'd said you had started building that from the script phase uh once you started seeing footage and key's performance and everything did that did you were you tempted to make tweaks to what you were doing based on like seeing the script come to life, or was it still pretty true to what you thought initially? It was pretty true to what I thought initially, actually. Um, just the sort of offbeatness. Um, so yeah, I did I, again like with the Obi theme. I, I sorry, I've said this before, but like a lot of the stuff with season two, I'd go back to orchestrate it out for the orchestra. And I'd be on version one or two of something because it was just like right there. Like I, it's so unusual with a project that you don't, that you just like on version one and you haven't had to make any changes, but um, yeah, the OB theme, maybe a few picture tweaks, but like it was, it didn't change. It was just, they, they heard the theme the, the you know, the team heard the theme and then they all loved it and it just stayed. How'd your cameo come about? Um, I don't know. Yeah. How did it come about? <laughs> um, did you, did you request I, to be in the show? The producer said, oh, you should come on set. Um, oh, and, and he said, we might need a piece of umpa music for uh, the world trip. So I knew I, he was like, we've got a thing we might need to do on camera for music in the, in the world in the Chicago World Fair. Um, and then I, because they were filming in London, I was sort of like, oh, maybe you could come on set. And I was like, oh, and then, yeah, they sort of said it would be really cool if you wanted to do it. And and then I, my theremin player, Charlie, is also, um, he's playing the trombone. So the two of us got to hang out. Um, and actually we've become, I, did, I knew him a little bit before, the show but we've just become really good friends over the last two years and um this summer just gone I was asked to do um a concert in Malaga a film music concert in Malaga and and a, a suite from Loki and they asked Charlie to come as well so we did like a road trip to Spain with this theremin it ons actually he played the on um so yeah we've we've had a road trip to Spain and a cameo and loki together now <laughs> so much of this this score is all of kind of the really the really fun stuff that gets to happen but there's also you know loki is kind of a different person this season or at least feels feels like that than than he was in the in the last one it seems like he's gone through a lot of growth and stuff 
were there ways uh, specifically that you wanted to kind of touch on that musically or score him differently this time around? I didn't really do any sort of straight up jolly, but like not jolly, but like sort of more lighthearted um, versions of the Loki theme. It, it tends to sort of be have a darker, darker edge to it. Um, and, you know, like the music on the MOEs at the end on episode four, it's like a very difficult atonal um, sort of serial use of the Loki theme, which sort of reflects his pain at what he's going through. He's kind of been ripped through time and things are not easy for him. And yeah, I just, I think that a darker, more reflective tone was, was something that um, ended up happening in season two with the score. Do you have a favorite theme or moment from the season that you're able to score and has it aired yet? If so. No, <laughs> episode six, the end of episode six, like the last reel, yeah. just all of it. Like I just, it felt like a, the end of a journey and just really meaningful to me. And um, yeah that that was that was the real highlight for me of the show 